right then lads welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal podcast my name is Kosi we are back again um at five to discuss much about Arsenal uh obviously just, just like we always do it's a Sunday so um look it's a little bit slow in terms of news, but uh, at least we have some crazy, crazy stories going around. Uh, Fabrizio Romano uh, giving us the latest about Donny van der Beek saying uh, that the player will decide to leave Manchester United in January um, if nothing changes in terms of game, you know, uh, you know, game, uh, game time. And Nicola Pepe asked, according to the Mail, have decided to accept any offers um, for the player between. 25 million. Actually, they're willing to sell the player for 25 million pounds. I mean, it's a big question there for me. Very, very big question. I'm, I'm, and we're going to try to dive into uh, Nicola Pepe, the price. Um, and um, when do we let him go? When do we actually, uh, you know, let go of Nicola Pepe? Because Arsenal deciding to, you know, to sell Pepe uh, for 25 million pounds, that's a huge loss, right? But will we, you know, uh, even if he stays, will we ever get our money back i do not think but anyway uh, we're gonna be discussing that and more a couple of things to uh you know dive into uh dozen blahovic to dotman um i'll try to expand on that of course i spoke about it in the general interest for me uh, you know early in the morning about um uh, about blahovic to dotman so i'll try to expand on that um and then basically i will be diving into some of um uh, the Thomas Party replacement that are, uh, replacements that have actually been said, uh, you know, to be uh, not really close, but Arsenal is trying to step up the game, trying to step up their game uh, in trying to find a party replacement for January. And the fact that his injury is actually becoming an issue, he could miss the Liverpool game. I never wanted to, uh, you know, I'd never wanted to hear about that. that, that that's one. That, that is the last thing uh, I wanted to hear about. You know. Thomas Partey missing the Liverpool game. But of course, we spoke about it yesterday. Um, and we said Ghana was still waiting for the final uh, decision Arsenal were going to give them. It looks like the final decision is like the player will not be playing for Ghana, uh, you know, in, in, in their last fixture in, uh, in in the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, same as uh, Arsenal. We might, actually, we might actually miss him uh, for Liverpool. So let's, uh, let us try to track, for, you know, track him down uh, for a whole week and see. Uh, in those six days, maybe uh, six, five days, how he's going to do it from Monday to Friday. Uh, probably he could get better, but at the moment he's still nursing his injuries um, at Arsenal. And it's really, really scary, uh, you know, for Arsenal fans. So please make sure you smash a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Like I said, uh, it's a Sunday. I know, I mean, many people are resting. It's time for, you know, it's time to rest, um, you know, really, really uh you know very very slow day in terms of content and, and things like that but let's start off with um donny van der Beek, right let's start off with donny van der Beek, uh because he is on the thumb now and then we'll try to uh, we'll dive into uh vlahovic and um and pepe so with donny van der Beek, um fabrizio romano of course he is you know he is the god we know that uh you know there is no better person. There is no better journalist to give you, uh, you know, ask the news uh, and transfer news rather than, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Fabrizio Romano. So Romano actually came out and said, um, you know, earlier before that, that a couple of clubs were on the radar uh, of Donny van der Beek. They wanted to sign him. And uh, w w one of those clubs was Arsenal. But he said another club that was in the rest was AC Milan. He also said that United were not really willing to let go um, of Donny van der Beek, not at any point in time, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, in general, in, in the general trust for, you know, they want, they want him to, uh, to stay. Uh, they feel, they still feel like uh, he should stay with them, uh, you know, uh, you know, in January. Now, uh, he said uh, uh, last, you know, last night that Donny van der Beek still feels respectful. He still feels he, you know, he wants to be at United, but he will leave in January. He's made his, you know, he's made his, uh, his decision. He will leave in January uh, if he doesn't get game time. Actually, the Metro um, have also written a piece about uh, Donny van der Beek, and they've said Manchester United start Donny van der Beek decides. Um, to leave the club in the January transfer window. Um, uh, basically, what they have written, uh, uh, you know, if we can go through it just for uh, a moment, they have said Van der Beek has decided to leave Manchester United in the January transfer window and is already exploring his options away from Old Trafford. The Dutchman uh, joined uh, from um, joined the club from Ajax in 2020 for a fee or uh, for a fee of about. 34 million, but he started just four Premier League games uh, for the Red Devils. Olegana Sosha 
has reportedly ins you know, insisted that the midfielder has a future at the club, but he's failed to come through with his promise and um, you know of more game uh, of more game time and the midfielder uh, for the midfielder this time. Van der Beek has remained professional uh, at the Theatre of Dreams, and he said to love the club fans uh, to love the club uh, the club's fans, but he's been out left out of the. Um, uh, Netherlands last two squads uh, and he's worried about his future right um, and they also say that according to Fabrizio Romano who I did quote in, in, in the beginning uh, Van der Beek has, the, uh, has therefore made up his mind to leave Manchester United in the uh, in the general transfer window and he's already looking at uh, you know offers elsewhere unless there is a sudden and unexpected change of, of events Van der Beek will look to move um, to a club uh, either in Spain or Italy or, or, or wherever you know he will be um, granted an opportunity the newcastle united have also been touted as an option united are in a strong position given the midfielder has over three years to run uh to run on his deal but his stock has um you know has has his stock has actually plummeted uh given he's barely kicked a ball in 18 months right so uh you know very insightful very very insightful of course uh the rest of the story is more useful to Manchester United fans and uh they're trying to show how you know he was a favorite to join uh Real Madrid and I think look I, I, I think if I'm Tony van der Beek uh I think it was a little bit unlucky that he didn't go to Real Madrid because look yeah, yeah I mean you, you might you know you must uh, you know my, uh, you might ask me <laughs> if he's not playing at United why would he go to you know Madrid would he actually be playing at Real Madrid but I just feel like Madrid they are in a transition, right? Whereas, you know, whereas United are most settled, especially under Olegana Sosha. He feels like McTominay and Fred is the pivot he loves. He feels like, you know, he feels like that is the pivot he wants to use. That is the pivot, uh, you know, he wants to play match day in, match day out. Pogba is struggling, uh, you know, to get game time. Pogba is world class. We know that. Uh, if, if you count the world class players at Manchester United, around three, probably or four: De Gea, Pogba, uh, Bruno, and um, and and Cristiano Ronaldo. Right. So Pogba is world class, but Pogba has been struggling to play uh, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I don't know whether it is his attitude or the manager is just stubborn. Really, I do not understand. But Donny says, "I want to leave." if nothing changes um in terms of me, of, of me gaming you know getting game time and I, I said this with with Raheem Sterling I think yesterday but one I said it with Raheem Sterling in the 5 p.m show that these players are not actually looking at uh money right these players are looking at game time Raheem Sterling is 26 um and uh Donny van der Beek is 24. they're looking at game time because this is the prime of their career just imagine uh you know you've worked so hard since 17 18 19 20 and you've been given uh you know round of applauses wherever you've been uh as one of the most progressive and really interesting uh prospects in football and then you hit the you know you hit the bar you set the bar too high you hit it and then just for just for a manager who feels like um two players who are actually not better than you uh you know who feels like they should be starting ahead of you right look there's a lot around Donny van der Beek uh, that we can speak of, and we are going to speak about it. One, he's scared. He's absolutely scared, right? Because World Cup is coming, and he has missed you know, uh, you know, uh, the Netherlands selection for the last two sessions. He's scared about that. And he's, you know, he has a right to be scared, because when he was at Ajax... You know, Ajax is uh, you know, is is, is really a lower rank club uh, as compared to Manchester United. With all due respect to Ajax, um, when he was at United, uh, sorry, at Ajax, he was a regular, right? He was that kind of you know player. Uh, you know, Ajax is calling midfielders, Donny, and a couple of others, right? Now at United, he's actually slightly falling out of favor. He's done picked up injuries uh, in, uh, in 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 his career ever since, ever since 2020 when he joined Manchester United. He's done picked up you know uh, injuries, and uh, for, uh, you know very unlucky for him. He's not among those players that are going to be uh called up by uh, you know called up for, for, for national team duty uh you know in you know through an ascribed process no i look is, is there anything called an ascribed process because you know if if something is ascribed then it is automatic there is nothing called an, uh, an ascribed process but let's assume uh you know uh you know there is an ascribed process you know he's not among those players that will be called up because of um an ascribed status because like i said the netherlands like i said in the morning the Netherlands are, are, um, 
um, a, a, a side or, or a nation that really puts up lots or brings in lots of talent, lots and lots of talent. So you've got to fight for your sport and you've got to be consistent uh, to win your sport. It's something we said with um, Raheem Sterling. The difference, yes, the, the difference, Don Van Der Beek with Raheem Sterling is, and, and, and this is my opinion because this is a fan channel, I feel like Sterling is more like, has more credit in the bank on England, right? Uh, than Donny than Donny has, uh, you know, with Netherlands, because with with Raheem Sterling, you know, he could be called up even if he spent uh, much time on the bench, because you know he's you know he's really done it for them uh, in the Euros in the last Euros, and you know he could be their lucky charm, uh, and uh, for issues of consistency, uh, for issues of maturity and things like that, because they have so many young players now um, coming through uh, for issues of pedigree, consistency, um, and keeping the structure and experience. Maybe Southgate could say, "Let me go with Raheem Sterling. Let me uh, let me keep Raheem Sterling." But with Donny Van Der Beek. Uh, he's just, you know, building his credit. He's just building his credit account. Now you can see, uh, of course, he's looking at it in this way. I've already missed out on two call-ups, right? If I missed out on two call-ups, the next call-up, I think, is going to be in January, right? I think the next call-up could be in January. Uh, if he misses out on that, what happens next? He's going to miss out on, you know, uh, on a World Cup, you know, Cup call-up. Call uh, and he doesn't watch. So he's going to be very, very desperate come January. Now, if you look at the clubs that are really interested in him, I think Newcastle uh, can give him uh, the required game time. And I feel like um, Manchester United will be a little bit safer, uh, will feel safer to let Donny van der Beek go out on loan to a club like Newcastle or, um, or to a club in Spain uh, or to a club in Italy, including AC Milan. Uh, I think Milan can give him the game time because he's good. Um, but at the moment, I just feel like, you know, Leon, you know, Milan also have that kind of quality. Uh, he, you know, he might struggle a little bit to break through, but I think he can break through uh, the Milan team because he's got the quality uh, that is uh, required. I feel like... Um, uh, look, I've not seen the links in Spain apart from Madrid and uh, the Madrid uh, links were before him joining Manchester United. I've not seen the links uh, in Spain, but the other links I've seen is uh, uh, is, is is Arsenal and Newcastle. Look, I don't know if 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 Mik you know, it depends if Mikel Arteta loves the player because you know with Mikel Arteta again, you know uh, he's the, that kind of you know uh, emotional uh, e e emotional manager. If he loves you, if he believes in you, it's gonna give you the game time. But if 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 Edu or the team decides to sign uh, Donny Van der Beek against the will of Mikel Arteta, uh, then that is a big big problem. I, I I feel like he might not get get the game time. And if you look at Arsenal, and this is me really really trying to think about uh, Mikel Arteta, how Mikel Arteta would think about it. Because uh, if you look at us really, we have found a structure. Right, we've really found a structure. Pate Lokonga or Pate Jaka uh, or Jaka Lokonga. Then ahead of them, Smith Rosaka and Lacazette or Smith Rosaka and Odegaard. And then uh, the striker is always Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. I doubt Mikel Arteta will want to have a, jam, you know, a January signing that's going to you know, destabilize that. What do I mean? I feel like Arsenal want to go for a player who's going to be happy to spend much of his time as a backup player uh, on the bench in January. And that's why I feel like it's going to be more of a loan deal or a free deal rather than a permanent deal, right? Because look, if you brought in a player like Donny van der Beek, he's going to say, look, Mikel, yes, I'm coming in, but you know my problem at Manchester United is game time. Are you going to give me the game time? Are you going to give me uh, you know, a start? Because look... Truth is, he's better than many midfielders uh, we have. Uh, that is the truth. He's played at a higher level uh, than the likes of Emu Smith Um, you know, at the moment Smith is flying, but we don't know if Donny Van Beek was fly was playing regularly. Probably could be, you know, he could have been flying at, at you know at, at the moment uh, for Manchester United. So his problem is game time. He's gonna say, "Are you giving me the game time that I want? Are you going to give me?" Um, uh, the regular, you know, the, the regular football. I want. If we can do that, honestly, he's gonna be our boy, right? But can we do it? Are we gonna dis you know, destabilize the structure? Personally, I would take Donny Van Der Beek through. Uh, I mean, like, not, not even hundred percent. I've seen percentages that go, you know, uh, past one hundred. I'll take him one, you know, like three hundred percent of the time. 
right? I would take him if, if 300% makes any sense. No, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not so good at mathematics. But I, I would take him. So I think it's more in our advantage, more, okay, more of uh, in the advantage uh, of clubs that do want Donny. It's more in their advantage. One, the manager, I, I, you know, look, he can never come out and say, you know, uh, this and this, but I, th I feel like he feels like Sosha is pathetic. That's the truth. And the, the truth is, for not playing Donny and Pogba uh, and losing games and losing midfield battles um, and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, significantly affecting uh, the quality of his midfield, he is absolutely pathetic. And, you know, he should be so, and he sh he should be so lucky uh, that he's still in that Manchester United job. So, uh, he should be feeling Sosha is pathetic, uh, at least not for... Look, if, if, if Donny looks at the, you know, uh, you know, at the pitch, on the pitch, and it is Matic and Paul Pogba uh, sitting in that pivot. Ahead of them is Bruno, uh, you know, Bruno Fernandes. On the left is Rashford. On the right is Jadon Sancho uh, or, 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 or Greenwood, who I think has been really, really good. And then up front is Ronaldo. He'll be like, yeah, maybe, um, you know, I, I need to fight for my position better. But week in, week out, he's looking at um, uh, an, uh, an era-prone, uh, you know, duo of Fred, right? Because I feel like, Fred and Max Somini were absolutely outdone by one player, Keita, in that Liverpool game, right? Completely outdone by one player. Uh, same, you know, same, you know, so, so did Tillemans against Leicester City. Uh, we saw them, uh, you know, the, the Atlanta mid you know, against Atlanta. They're lucky that they have Ronaldo. Uh, they should have lost both, you know, they could have lost both games, really. Um, and then against Manchester City, there was no challenge. Yeah, we didn't put in a challenge against City as well. Uh, embarrassing, you know, really, really embarrassing. But against, against City, uh, they did put in a challenge as well. So, look, I, I just feel, you know, he feels like, um, and this is the same thing, uh, some, something I said with Martinelli. He's looking at Emu smith Bro and Saka and he's like, ah, I need to get in there. And, uh, look, Don is also looking at Fred. Uh, and, 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 and it's even worse with Donny Vanda because looking at Fred is like, I'm better than Fred. Why aren't I playing? I'm better than, um, uh, you know, uh, th than McTominay. Why aren't I playing? Um, I, I think, look, he can't replace both of them, right? Because McTominay uh, plays, you know, for you as a, uh, as a DM. And, um, you know, uh, look, Donny is not going to do that. But I feel like Donny is a very, very good number eight. However much he's come out um, and he said he would be, you know, would love to play as a 10. And, you know, look, players do say that and, uh, you know, those kind of things. And I'm not really even bothered um, when he says he wants to play the uh, 10. Because at Ajax, he was very, very progressive. You know, we, you know look, uh, much of the time we watched him in the Champions League. Now, you know, I, I, I didn't, I don't watch the, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the Dutch LDVZ. I don't. I don't watch that league. But I, I, I always, um, you know, watch their talent when they come to Europe because they, they, their teams really perform well, especially in the group stages, right? Uh, they really do perform, perform well. And when you look at the time uh, when Donny van der Beek, uh, you know, signed for Manchester United, I say this, Arsenal should have gone for that deal, right? Because United signed him, you know, during that transfer window because there's a lot of pressure there. Right, and no one was coming in at the moment. Right, so they were like, "Okay, let's get in." Uh, you know, uh, Donny Van der Beek. Donny wants us, and if you remember, they signed Donny Van der Beek within, I think, w w within twenty-four hours. That's one of uh, the other deals they've done. Uh, within twenty-four hours, same as Cristiano Ronaldo. Within twenty-four hours, they had signed him. But is he the player they wanted? Because look. United still, if, if they're going to solve their problems, uh, you know, for instance, if Pogba stays, they want a holding midfielder. They want a CDM. So they're uh, definitely going to go for a Ruben Neves or Bissouma uh, or, or, or Oriol Chichemini, uh, you know, uh, the French guy. And that still means Donny van der Beek doesn't get the request he's doing. He's saying, give me game time. And they don't give it. Uh, again, if, if United is to solve its problems, uh, and all the conundrums, because for me, if they get a manager, right, now that Pop Pogba is out, probably Donny van der Beek stands a bigger chance. But if they get a manager, a proper manager, uh, he plays Pogba, right? He plays Pogba in his right position. And what he does, for, for example, if, if they get Zidane, Zidane will go and get Oriol Germany. You know, uh, you know, fellow uh, Frenchman, things like that, that connection, uh, you know, and, and Pogba is, is never going to leave when they get uh, Zidane. Uh, if they get Brendan Rodgers, he's going to tell them, you know what? I signed Somare. I, I, I did have Ndidi uh, at Leicester City and, had, and, and I had Tillemans, right? 
In, uh, instead of giving me Telemans because I have Pogba and Bruno, why don't you give me a Wilfred Lady? Get me a, a Wilfred Lady from uh, Leicester City. So again, you know, you know, logically, if you think about it, Don is not close to getting minutes at Manchester United with or without, um, you know, Alec Gunnar Solskjaer. Unless, uh, you, know, a, you know, a new manager decides to give him, uh, you know, regular minutes off the bench, which I think you'd be uh, a little bit happy with, you know, depending on the caliber of players that would be... Um, ahead of him, especially in the role that, that, that he can play. Because the good thing with Donny, and, I, and why I think he would be a very, very good sign for Arsenal, is he can play for you as a 10, right? Get that creativity in. I mean, he can specialize as a 10. Very, very wonderful player on the ball. But he can also be that, you know, uh, deeper midfielder. Of course, it could co cause problems between him and Thomas Partey because Partey uh, is now used to getting the permission and, uh, and, and freedom to fly uh, from Xhaka and Lokonga. So if, if, if you play him, uh, you know, with Partey, you're limiting Thomas Partey. But... Probably uh, the good thing with him again is he can be another Emil Smith role. You can play him on the left hand side uh, of the midfield. You could play him on the right hand side of the midfield. Probably not very effective, but he's, for me, he's that dynamic. He's that he's that flexible. United, they, they can't say that. Uh, and and th look, this is on. T uh, no, if he leaves United, yes, he's three. He still has three years. But if he leaves United. It's absolutely on social, yeah. It's absolutely on social, yeah. Look, but Arsenal try to get this deal done. It's hard. It's difficult, right? It's very, very difficult. It's, it's not like you know you just walk in and tell United, look, um, we have midfield issues. Give us Donny Van der Beek, and uh, we complete the season. They're gonna be like, are you crazy? Are you crazy? You're already ahead of us at the moment. Uh, we're struggling. You're ahead of us. And you want us to give you, uh, you know, a, you know uh, uh, a talent. Just like Jose Marino said at, at, uh, at Chelsea uh, when we wanted Romelu Lukaku. Do you remember his statement? He said, I can't give a goal scorer to Arsenal when they have signed a goal machine. He was meaning, all, you know, uh, he was meaning uh, 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 Ozil, Messi Ozil. When we signed Ozil, we tried to, sell, you know, to, to sign uh, uh, Lukaku and... Uh, Chelsea said, you guys are out of your minds. We can't give you a Lukaku when you have signed, uh, w when you have signed Ozil. Do you want to win the league, uh, you know, ahead of us? Uh, we can't do that. So it's the same thing that could happen with Manchester United. Uh, they are really afraid now. Uh, look, I, I feel like United do have a better squad, do have better talent, do have a lot of, uh, a lot in stock. Um, they can actually uh, finish ahead of us uh, if they get their grip you know, earlier, if they find the formula to winning games uh, consistently earlier. But as an Arsenal fan, um, I'm going to be optimistic. If Arsenal try to do this deal, you never know. Things have happened. They took Van Persie from Arsenal you know, on a permanent deal, not even on, on a long deal, uh, on a permanent deal, and he won them, tro you know, w w won them a trophy. Uh, they took Alexis Sanchez. He, you know, he was a big, big, big flop. Uh, but they took... Um, you know, Alexis Sanchez was one of the biggest, biggest talents I've ever seen, uh, you know, in my life with my eyes at Arsenal. And, you know, they took him uh, just like, you know, it, it, it was like a joke. Uh, you know, it was it was humiliating, in a humiliating transfer deal. Uh, just like, the, um, just like uh, you know, the Van Persie one. But look, maybe it could happen. I don't know. Maybe it could happen. Arsenal could, uh, you know, it, it's now on the end of Arsenal. Do we want the player, right? Do we want the player? We've been linked with him, right? But I've not seen very, very strong statements uh, like Donny has made uh, because it's coming from a very, very big journalist. I've, I've not seen, seen very strong statements from Arsenal that uh, we would love to, uh, you know, get Donny van der Beek. The strong statements we are making are on Zakaria, are on, uh, you know, Zelik Zelik. Zell uh, it's not Selik, but um, I, I really want to say Dijan uh, Kulevisky. Uh, those are the players that um, we are making strong strands, uh, you know, about. But Donny, look... It's it's a no brainer for me, guys. I, I don't know. Look, at times I could be deluded, and um, you know, it's one problem that I always have. At, at times I could really, really be deluded. But for me, it's um, it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. We have 18 likes so far. Uh, that is really very low uh, compared to the community that we have. Uh, the big, big Arsenal community. So make sure the likes are going up, guys. Make sure the likes are coming in. Let's get them to at least 30 right about now. Um, 12 more likes. Do that. Smash the like button. 12 people. Smash the like button. Uh, let's get the party moving and rolling. So Donny van der Beek has all the reasons to move away from Manchester United. Um, 
but United do not have enough reasons to sell to uh, to, to sell to Arsenal, or probably uh, let him go out and, uh, on loan to Arsenal. And definitely, um, I wouldn't want a player who comes in and we know he's never going to sign for us. Because for me, Donny wants United. Donny wants to prove himself at United, and he knows um, uh, United are currently in the Champions League. Uh, so. The, the, the worst they can do is drop into the Europa League. So they are playing, uh, you know, in Europe. So if if, if he's going away, probably wants a club that could actually, uh, you know, be in Europe, right? But I feel like he might end up uh, uh, at um, Newcastle. Probably, I think uh, we have had, uh, we've seen Jesse Lingard go to West Ham. Uh, look, I, I, I doubt United can give West Ham any other player. So, I, you know, he can't go to West Ham, but Newcastle, uh, they're interested. I feel like, you know, he can go to Newcastle. Uh, I feel like he can also go to AC Milan, right? Uh, he can also go to AC Milan. But he wants the transfer. He wants out. Uh, definitely, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to him if, if, I, if I were at, at Manchester United. Uh, let's see what, you, you know, some of you are saying about this lovely name, uh, Stella. Where you, what? Uh, let me let, let, let me first uh you know go where this you know chat started. Uh, P Pate will be fit for the Liverpool game. Arsenal are playing games to keep him uh injury free and fresh. This according to uh you know Gogo. Look Gogo. Um, look. Um, at times we do not want to take in uh reality, right? At times we don't want to take in reality. Uh, we just want to feel like you know Pate is not injured and things like that. But based on the you know, based on his injury record at Arsenal. We don't have any reason to believe Arsenal is playing mind games unless we see him, uh, you know, on, 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 on Saturday. But he's been really, really injury prone at Arsenal. So uh, there is no reason for us to, you know, to doubt uh, the fact that he could be actually injured. Good evening to you, Kossi. Good evening to you, Stella. How are you doing? Um, and uh, of course, Gogo was saying hi, you know, uh, hi there uh, to you. Greeting to, uh, to, uh, to you, Kossi. Good, greeting to you, Winnie. Uh, how are you doing? I hope you guys, um, your Sunday is okay. Uh, let's just chat us no, on, uh, on, uh, on, on a Sunday evening, on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, Goga says, um, no, 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 not really. Uh, Obed says, Man United can't give him to Arsenal. Uh, look, like I said, um, it's, it's, it's a tight call, right? It would be very, very, very tight call. Very, very tight call. Uh, right. Uh, then Gogo says, we need a DM, Bruno Guimaraes. For me, uh, Bruno Guimaraes is not a DM, is a CM, uh, or, you know, a box-to-box. -to -box. Uh, for me, is my man. And, and, uh, and then a striker. Alba and Laka will not get us through. Mohamed says, Kossi, Van der Beek is a good player, but United, uh, uh, but United, uh, you know, wasted, uh, but, but United have wasted him on the bench. Uh, absolutely true. As Stella says, I'm from Uganda. Maybe, uh, you can get, uh, me on Twitter. Uh, all right. Um, and then Anu says, good, uh, good evening. Good evening to you, Anu. Thank you. Uh, thank you for always watching in. Um, uh, uh, uh and then Anu says, can United sell Van der Beek to Arsenal? Uh, I think that's the big question. Can they, you know, can they do, you know, something really decisive? Because for me, it would be a very, very poor, uh, poor decision uh, if they did. I love him, right? I love him, but it would be a very, very poor decision for my, from Manchester United uh, to do that. And then when he says Arsenal should not, uh, should not, should let out Pepe and let in Gabriel Martinelli. So um, with that being said, let's dive into Nicola Pepe. Oh my God! Finally. There is a breakthrough. There is a statement from us now. Uh, I don't know. How, I, I don't know how many times we've spoken about Pepe. Now, Mail Online Sports, Mail Online Sports are saying Arsenal are willing. Uh, uh, you know, Arsenal are willing to sell record signing Nicola Pepe for just twenty five million pounds. Let's no, let's go through the article. And try to uh, and, and try to, uh, to to understand, right? Um, uh, this site is called Pain the Arsenal, uh, powered by Ninety Men. I do love Ninety Men. Um, they're saying Arsenal transfers Arsenal I twenty five million uh, Nicolas Pepe sell twenty five million pounds. That's a huge loss and that's a bargain. Um, so listen. Transfer season can uh, seasons can get quite silly at times. Reports emerge with all sorts of baseless statements that are um, th that have the sole purpose of stringing up dialogue. It happens at um, you know all the time at Arsenal, and it's almost always at work. Plenty of reports have been floating around uh, around lately, linking Arsenal with some um, wide forwards. The main one at present regarding uh, uh, at present is regarding Juventus's Dijan. 
uh, Kulusevsky, uh, who is increasingly likely to leave the Serie A side in the coming windows. Reports on the um, uh, from Italy keep ramping up uh, and uh, ramping up, and fees between 30 million euros to 40 million euros have been mentioned. Mikel uh, have been mentioned. Mikel Arteta has also advocated uh, the purchase, while uh, it's even been uh, stated that the Swede uh, the Swede uh, is destined to join. Other links have been Noah Lang. Um, uh, uh, Noah Lang uh, 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 received similar treatment. Uh, there are claims that a bid is being readied by the Gunners who want to add up uh, the Dutchman to their ranks and the age profiles of both players fit the recruitment strategy in place at Arsenal. Right. Um, in case of either, uh, you know, uh, in case of either, uh, what moves to be pushed through, then it would uh, signal for an end of a certain Nicolas Pepe at the club. The Avorian is already no longer a regular fixture uh, in the side, with Bukayo Saka and Emil Smith Rowe occupying the wide berths, and Pepe's usage of the bench is also fleeting at the best. Uh, with the hectic winter schedule approaching ahead of the 26 year old jetting off to Afcon. Uh, with Ivory Coast, uh, there will be multiple matches where his services will be ca uh, called upon. Nonetheless, he isn't banging on the door uh, for a starting bath, and um, his future looks bleak in North London. The letters uh, surrounding his future claims that Arsenal are willing to sell him for a measly £25 million. Pounds. He Sorry, the Daily Mail uh, ran with his headline citing football in London as the source. Yet nowhere, uh, you know, uh, yet nowhere in either report is actually stated. Um, it's um, mentioned that uh, in the latter that the links to the um, to other forwards could be an indicator of Mikel Arteta eyeing life after Nicola Pepe, which makes complete sense. Uh, but uh, but the notion of um, but the notion of being open to moving him on for just twenty five million doesn't really uh, make a lot of of sense uh it's been plucked up uh, uh, you know um they believe it's been plucked out of thin air uh does that mean uh it isn't true no it is total speculation but as far as the old uh but but as far as the old one uh uh the old uh, but as far as the old one out in the squad pepe doesn't uh does not slot into this group as seemingly others right so look look i, I looked at this article I looked at this article around two hours ago, and um, I first saw this, you know, the story on Twitter. Uh, the mail writing it, and uh, it's been picked up, you know, by a couple of um, by a couple of uh, uh, blogs and, uh, and, and 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 journalists. You know, I say this, and I'll say it again: when you are linked with a certain player, it's either because there is, uh, you know, uh, you know, there is cause. Or that you know uh, that position is empty. Now look, we do have a couple of midfielders and we do have a couple of wingers where uh, you know Pepe is included. But I just feel like we need better. We need some you know something more, right? Smith Rowe can play on the left, but he can also play as a you know as as a number ten and probably compete with Martin Odegaard. I just feel like we we, we are lacking goals. Uh, from the wings and we are also lacking some explosiveness from uh from the wings now pepe uh should be providing maturity he should be providing us with uh uh you know decide you know, decisive decisiveness goals uh, uh he should be the, one of the you know one of those players that give us what the young players can't because look abama young is also not doing that at the moment uh, if you look at the older players, actually, if if I look at the senior players that have tried to do their thing, their responsibility well um, in the Arsenal side, it's Pate. I think Pate has done it well. Uh, Lacazette has done it well as a senior player. Um, I think Tierney. If, if I'm going to count count Tierney uh, among the senior players, because he's, uh, this is around his third season, I think Tierney is also doing it well. Uh, you know, at at, at the club, Aubameyang. There's a huge doubt whether he's actually providing us with uh, uh, the right kind of balance. Now, Pepe is below standards. That's the right thing, right? I'm not even going to talk about his um, his price tag, which was a waste, because you know, players don't negotiate their prices, right? Players do not negotiate their own price. And I, I really can't come out and attack a player um, for his price tag, right? It is... Whoever you know, whoever did this deal is to blame for the price tag. It's not Nicola Pepe, and I would excuse Nicola Pepe for uh, for the price tag. I would actually do that. But what I can't excuse uh, excuse Nicola Pepe for is his lack of attitude, his lack of character, 
he's at least look pepe is 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 capable of giving us double figures per season right he's capable of doing that we shouldn't be even we shouldn't be in debates of how many goals are we going to score and where going where are they going to come from we should know that Lakers can give us 10 goals in a season. You know that Aubameyang can give us 15 goals in a season. And that much is also true when it comes to uh, Pepe. He should be able to give us 10, 11 goals in a season. But his, his attitude, for me, is not really working out. He's so comfortable, right? He's very, very comfortable. And I said this last season, uh, when, we, when we were dropped out of, um, when, when we were kicked out of the um, uh, uh, Europa League, uh, by Villarreal, I said our players are too comfortable. The, you know, the morale has changed a little bit with some players. Uh, actually, with a couple of players, I look at um, you know, uh, you know, uh, players with you know, with uh, a fighting spirit, with a fighting mentality. Other players are actually trying, working so hard to get back into the squad. Pepe is not doing that. When he comes on, I, I don't see. I, I don't see it. He started the season. I, I, I saw nothing. I saw nothing. It's not fatigue. It's nothing, right? I don't want to say it's not good enough because uh, I, I, I think I was talking to Glenn and I said, when I look at Pepe, at times, you know, him trying to do the colors and things like that, uh, and we were saying that uh, if, if there was anything you could add, you could add to Nicola Pepe, personally, uh, I would add, uh, um, you know, successful dribbling. I would add that. Uh, I would add, you know, successful dribbling uh, to his game. And I would also maybe add... Uh, 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 the, you know, decision making because he also sucks at that. But I, I don't see a player who's trying so hard to get his position back. It's, it's not what I see with Nicola Pepe. It's far away. It's very, very far away uh, from what uh, you know other players are doing. Because if you look at Emu Smith, I think it was Balogun who was making, uh, who was who had an interview and said the uh, same time last year. Emil Smith Rowe was an under 23 player. 365 days later, that is a year, he is now, uh, you know, starting at England, being called, you know, being, being called up, uh, you know, at England national team, and he's starting every game at Arsenal, and he has scored three goals in his last three appearances for Arsenal. Right? Players are pushing. I, I think Saka is pushing. And you know, Saka pushed his way up, uh, and he's still pushing, and, and that's why he's you know retaining his place, right? Uh, you know, Lacazette has been pushing, knocking on the day, pushing until Mikel Arteta said, "Okay, uh, I feel like you are relevant. Let's rest Odegaard. Uh, come in because you are, at the moment you are doing well, right? If you know, if the manager is is going to pick players uh, on a criteria of who deserves to be picked, Pepe doesn't." And at times, I, I, I just feel so awful uh, when he's picked off the bench over Gabriel Martinelli. I just feel like it's a mistake. It's a mistake, Mikel. Bring on Martinelli. So for me, my problem with Pepe, and like, um, and like the article we've looked at says, playing in the Arsenal, they're saying that it could be a little bit ridiculous that Arsenal let go of him uh, probably in January and for £25 million, pounds, right? Uh, it could be a little bit ridiculous. We could be holding out for uh, some £30 million, uh, or thirty five. But is there a club that's really going to give us uh, 35 million pounds for a player of Nicola Pepe's attitude? A player who's, uh, who misses a shot by very, very wide and then just, you know, bosses around, you know, uh, brags around as if, you know, he hit the target, right? He's a clinical player. He's a clinical striker. And, um, you know, whether we are unleashing him in the wrong way, whether we are, uh, you know, uh, playing him in the wrong way, I do not know. But my question with Pepe is his, you know, is his attitude and character. Where is the Pepe we saw in the last 10 games of the season? Where, you know, where is that Pepe who scored five goals uh, in the last... Did he score five goals in, last, you know, in, in, in the last three uh, games of the season? Where is that Nicola Pepe? The Nicola Pepe that I thought uh, is going to be integral uh, in Arsenal's plans this season. Uh, the Nicola Pepe that I, that I thought is going to be uh, key to our season. Where is that Nicola Pepe? He's dropped so much. By the time he came at Arsenal, he dropped instantly. Right? He dropped instantly. And all managers, right? All managers that he's played under have given him the chance. Right? But he's so, he's so unreliable. Good in the Europa League last season. Good at the end of the season uh, in the Premier League. And now he's gone.
right? So if you have, you know, if, if you're going to have a player who is so seasonal like that, I would rather do away with him. There's so many out, you know, there's so many players out there uh, that we can get. Actually, what I would say is, if you if you're going to get a player like uh, uh, Kulisevsky uh, or Noah Lang, what we should do is get 30 million out of Nicola Pepe and just reinvest that money in Noah Lang and treat it like it never happened with never signed Nicola Pepe because it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Look at the money. Uh, uh, and, and look, th that is Nicola Pepe's uh, uh, valuation. Let's go to uh, transfer market and see what, uh, wh wh what valuation he is. Nicola Pepe, transfer market, right? Let me just for it. No, let me search for it here. Because look, I, I don't see any club giving us more than that. They would be crazy. They'll be out of their mind. What? Let's see his valuation. Seventy-two million pounds. We ever paid for him, and I know it is never the fault of the player when you pay too much for him. It's never his fault. And and look, at the moment, his valuation is thirty-five million euros. Thirty-five million euros. Twenty-six years of age, right winger from Ivory Coast. Twenty thirty-five million euros. Thirty-five. That is what we should have paid, right? That is what we should have paid, really. 35 million euros. That is what we should have paid. We overpaid, and that is, that is actually uh, not his fault. But do I let him go? Uh, could I, you know, should we let him uh, let, let go of him in January? He's going to be out for AFCON uh, with Ivory Coast. I don't think we should let go of, of him in January. The best way to do this deal is in the summer, right? The summer get Pepe uh, on the bus to any other club or get him on the plane to any other country, uh, I'll be glad. And the likes of Kolasinak who've picked up injuries, uh, you know, and, and things like that. So Pepe, for me, um, look, I would love if, you know, if, if it had worked out. I would love because, he, you know, he, he just looks like a magician, but he's so unreliable. There's a very, very good player in there. We know that. Whenever I watch Pepe, I feel like there is a good player in Nicola Pepe. There is a good player in there. But when? Until when are we going to, uh, you know, wait until, he, you know, he, until, uh, until he, he, uh, he uh, unleashes himself? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. You know, really. I really don't know. So uh, that is my big problem with Nicola Pepe. But guys, should we, j j just I want a yes or no. Should we let him go in January? Would you take 25 million pounds for Nicola Pepe? Just type yes or no because that's the topic we are talking about uh and i will know right would you take 25 million pounds uh for nicola pepe in january provided um you sell him for 25 and you get noah lang uh, actually noah lang is that uh you know club bridge uh not um not he's he's, he's, he's uh he's dutch but he's playing at uh club bridge uh so would you go and uh, get a player like noah lang or would you go for a player like jesse lingard um and get rid of nicola pepe Right, because look, I'm one of those people who say Lingard, no, out of the picture. I don't take Lingard, but I just, you know, I, I looked at him at uh, West Ham, uh, and it's like maybe there is some, also, there is some good player in there, right? Uh, but uh, look, <laughs> Lingard is not the time. It's not the time to talk about just Lingard. Uh, I've seen those links, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the summer, and we talked about him. At the moment, there are no links, you know, with uh, with, with just Lingard. But Pepe, you know what I would do with Pepe? If there is a club that gives us uh, a loan deal with an obligation to buy uh, 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 next summer, I would give them uh, Pepe for a whole season, ask them to pay their, you know, his wages, and put a, a, an obligation to buy for thirty-five million pounds, right? Thirty-five million pounds of thirty-five million euros. I would do that. Yeah. I'll do that. Uh, thanks everybody for smashing the like button. Um, I, I look. I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it uh, at 28 likes. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm absolutely grateful. So uh, let's keep pushing. Let's keep doing it. Let's keep pushing the like button. We are at 28. Let's move to 35. Seven more likes to do that. Uh, let's move it to 35 likes. Um, I'll be absolutely very, very grateful if you can actually get that done uh, for me on this sunday so guys nicola pepe i need some of your thoughts on nicola pepe before we go to um uh Klesavisky and Arsenal being uh you know reading up uh their bid uh what are your thoughts on nicola pepe uh anu says no keep pepe until the summer right uh, yeah look i think that's a brilliant idea i think that's a brilliant idea keep him until the summer and then in the summer if no one is willing to give us straight cash it's okay. Loan him out for whole season with an obligation to buy. Okay. Uh, and then Ricky says, no, 
don't let uh you know don't let um um uh, uh, uh you're not letting him go ricky mall uh steve cater is saying no as well he doesn't let go of uh of 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 of, of, of nicola pepe omar says pepe should be sold even um they give him another year uh to improve he can't right um has he hit his you know as he hit his ceiling uh look I don't want to be harsh. I, I don't want to be too harsh, really. Uh, I don't want to be too harsh. But if he has not hit his ceiling yet, it's not too far. Right? It's not too far. So, with Pepe, I feel like his ceiling is very close. Right? His ceiling is very close. If he's not hit it yet, right? If he's not hit it yet, um, it's not very far. It's going to hit it very, very soon. Uh, and then Ricky Mo says, guess, um, guys, let's get it uh, uh, get it to 45. Hit the like button. Thank you so much, Ricky Mo. I'm going to display this. Uh, you know, thank you, so, uh, thank you so much for the love, uh, Ricky. Thank you so much. Hit the like button, people. Thanks, everybody, uh, for doing that. Uh, thank you so much. Of course, uh, you know, you do support the content by actually uh, doing that. I hope you realize. Um, and then uh, um, uh, Theodore says, no, you don't take 25 million pounds. Uh, look, I also feel like, you know, it's, it's a bit low. I don't know, 35 is his valuation at the moment. Probably I could take 35. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's halfway. Uh, uh, Omao says Pepe uh, should be sold. He can't improve. Uh, and then Hakuna Matata um, says, uh, why am I not mod? Let me see why you're not mod. I mean, YouTube has really been uh, uh, playing games. Uh, YouTube has been playing games, uh, you know, a lot. Uh, but I hope now you're mod. I hope now you're mod. I, I, I can see it. You're not mod. I hope you're mod now. Uh, YouTube has really been playing games, really, really, really playing games. But I hope you're mod now, right? I hope you're mod now, uh, Kuna Matata, one of my men uh, that I really, really, really remember, always been, always there. So, guys, um, Pepe, yes or Pepe, no, right? 25 million for Pepe, yes or no, right? Pepe out in January, yes or no? Because for me, look, the truth is, to, to bring in more players, we will need to offload. There's a lot of dead wood lingering around the walls of Arsenal Football Club. Kolasnak is there. Chambers, Holding are there. Uh, 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 Cedric is there. All those players are dead wood. Runason is out on loan. He's going to be back. He's still there. Uh, now you, you have the likes of uh, in the mid... Because there, there, there are those difficult decisions with Kolasnak. Those are straightforward decisions that we have to do. But there are those difficult decisions... That are going to happen, like the likes of Pepe. That's a difficult decision, right? Do you sell him? Uh, do we? I, I mean, can we have uh, the heart? Can can Edu and Ateta have you know the guts to make that decision? Same with um, uh, Jaka. I mean, Jaka is leaving. Jaka is staying, uh, and then finally stayed. Um, can we? Uh, you know, can we get uh, you know the courage? Can we be brave enough uh, to finally say yes? These guys are living and they are living for good right um and then you know we get better players and and, and, and you know get a better squad it's gonna be uh, a, a process i do understand uh and i got no problem with that as long as the process actually finally pays off and works uh okay um uh ricky says let's see the like button to 45 please 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 guys thanks everybody let's get those likes up let's get those likes up three more likes to 35 um at least uh three more likes to 35 thanks everybody wow that's absolutely brilliant that's absolutely brilliant 52 people watching 32 likes that means many people are spamming please do not spam uh you know keep watching and keep uh smashing the like button right max says manager should give the chance to martinelli uh instead of uh, instead of giving to pepe i said it Right, I said it. Uh, I just felt like, uh, you know, Martinelli as a young player knows really what it means to play for Arsenal. And 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 I said this um, um, when these older players were actually disappointing. I said these young players know what it means to play for Arsenal. They are fighting for the chance. They need that chance, right? They need that chance, right? Uh, okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, um, uh, Segi says exactly that. Uh, you know, for Nicola Pepe, Robert says because because I think it's time for Pepe uh, to get another club and start uh, you know a new life. Uh, Mohamed says, uh, uh, let, Pepe uh, let Pepe leave. He is selfish, can't pass the ball to his teammates who can't, uh, you know, uh, who can score the goals. Yeah, you're right. Look, but look, it could be the management. Can, can we talk about the coaching, right? Before we go away from Pepe, can we talk about the coaching? Because, you know, he is a player who was successful at Lille Metropole. 
uh, are, are we doing something not right i, I look i don't know but uh, it, it's it, again you can go back to the coaching uh and i've said this all the time about michael that uh despite the fact that he might turn th you know, things around th uh, things around even if he turns things around is in a manager to inspire a group of young players because there's a young manager uh, who's also seeking inspiration right is it a manager that says pepe is not doing this is it a manager to help this group of players like pepe right players with special oh my god special needs is um is too harsh right special needs is too harsh but look excuse me if, if you can excuse my language pepe if you can consider pepe as a player with special needs is, is Mikel the right manager to bring about to bring out the you know, the, the, the the best of pepe because if it were club I think he would do a better job, slightly a better job uh, with Nicola Pepe. So uh, it also goes back to what have we done as a club to help Nicola Pepe? Have we done enough as a club to help? You know, it's not about, you know, putting a player on the pitch all the time. It goes far, you know, further than that. Because, uh, you know, uh, when a player joins you, you know, he's, he's, he's literally playing his part of loyalty. He joins you. Uh, he, he attends training on time. Uh, he's not really big-headed. Uh, when you call him up, you know, uh, in games, he is there. But, you, you know, your you, part of loyalty as a club is to make sure that these players that have decided to join you and be part of you also add value, right? It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it's part of you, uh, you know, to add some value to these players, right? So, have we added value to Nicola Pepe? Look, I don't know. I really do not know. But, you know, thanks, everybody, for, uh, you know, getting me uh, to know your thoughts, really. Uh, Rick says, Kosi Pepe's heart is out of Arsenal. I don't know. Uh, do you think so? I, I, mean, I mean, he's not done any tragic incidents. He's not done any tragic incidents uh, to show that um, his mind is not settled. I don't feel like it's, I don't feel like it's, the, it's, it's psychological, right? I don't feel like it's at a psychological level. Uh, it might be at a psychological level because, look, I, I, I've been one of those players that are, uh, sorry, one of those people that have been uh, affected when you get to a certain level. For example, I've ever been the best in my class and then suddenly I drop, right? Like consecutively, I drop consecutively. It hurts, it affects you psychologically, right? If you used to be a good performer, like Pepe was used to be uh, at um, uh, at Leon. When you suddenly look, when you suddenly drop out of favor, when your standards drop, you know drastically, it affects you as a player, right? It really affects you. So I feel like he could be affected, probably, uh, and that goes to uh, the psychological level, um, probably emotional level. The emotional level, I don't feel. I don't feel like Pepe uh, is an outcast, right? I don't feel like Pepe is an outcast, and he's not receiving as much stick as uh, as players like Granny Jack have received. Not really, as players like um, Scobran Mustafi has received. He's not receiving uh, as much, uh, you know, uh, you know, as much stick. So I feel like it could be for me. His, you know, the issue with Pepe is on the pitch. Why isn't it working on the pitch? And that's why I say I'm, I'm saying, is it on a coaching level probably? Is it you know, maybe not on a psychological level, not an, uh, at a, an emotional level, but could it be just at the coaching level that he's not having success uh, on the pitch? Because I feel like that is where the problem is. Right. Um, uh, Anu says, because see, what is the problem? But what is the Pepe problem uh, is the price. We got him and he doesn't want to improve. Or is it uh, the coach or the league? Uh, the league, I feel like he's adapted well to the Premier League. I feel like he's adapted well to the Premier League. I don't feel like Pepe has been, uh, you know, really outdone by the Premier League, right? I don't feel like he's one of those players that have been really, really outdone uh, by the Premier League. I, I don't feel it in that way, right? I don't feel it in that way. I don't feel it that way. Unless I'm wrong, but I don't feel it that way. We are one like to 35. Thanks, everybody, for doing that. One like, right? Just smash that thumbs up. One like this, like this, one lucky person, one generous person to give us that one like away from 35. So look, Pepe outdone by the Premier League. No, because he's he's challenged one of the you know some of the best defenders in the league. He destroyed Luke Shaw uh in in in, in, in the match against United. He you know he he, he took on Virgil van Dijk. And he was, um, you know, really successful, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, on a couple of occasions. I don't feel like Sister Lee. I don't feel like um, 
is you know he's failed to adapt i feel i feel like it's also above that level i feel like it, it could be the coaching i feel like it could be the coaching right i feel like we need to have either let him go or get a deeper look in his problems right why is he not working why is it not working out why is it not working out if we can do that uh then i think we know uh we, we can help him uh out um uh, Max says, Bakosi, what is uh, Pepe most capable of? Uh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. And it, could, uh, it might sound ridiculous, right? Um, it might sound ridiculous. But I'm going to say this. At Liu, I mean, nostalgically, at Liu, um, he was more of a player who gets in the box more and uh, re you know, received more service uh, in the final third. And he was more of a finisher. So if you ask me what is Pepe uh, more capable of, finishing. I'm absolutely sure. Look, I can't back him on any other things. But finishing, I can back him. I can back him on finishing. He's, he's, I, I think, it, let's mention five. Mo give me, if you had a chance, a last minute chance, right? If you had a, a last minute chance in a game, currently at Arsenal, which player would you give it to? Let's, let's do that. Right? I'm, I'm taking the first six comments. If you had five players, I, I mean, uh, if you had the last minute chance, last minute chance, not a penalty, uh, but last minute chance, uh, uh, open play. At the moment at Arsenal, which player would you give it to? Like, through one-on-one, -on -one, which player would you give it to? Like, um, I'm, I'm taking the first six comments. Right? I'm reading the first six comments. Look, I'm going to say this. Number one, uh, in, 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 in being very clinical uh, 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 at Arsenal. Look, Aubameyang is scary these days. Aubameyang is a little bit scary these days. So in terms of being clinical at the moment, I give, I, 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 I'll give that chance to Alexander Lacazette, right? Number one, Alexander Lacazette. I feel like if it's a last minute chance, yes, he did a lot of, you know, uh, you know uh, problems, uh, you know, in the in, last time in the Europa League, but I would give him my chance. Second is Nicola Pepe. Pepe is clinical, guys. Right? Pepe is clinical. It's just that he's not getting that service. He's not getting that service. And when he's on the page, but he's clinical. So a last minute chance, I'll give it to Pepe. That is option two. Option three, at the moment, Abameyang. Right? I'll give it to Abameyang. Option three. Option four, uh, Emil Smith Wall. And then option five, Gabriel Martinelli. Those are my five. Saka is out of it. Saka getting a chance. Out of it, out of it, my bro, out of it. Uh, he needs to work on his finishing. So those are my first, no, th those are my top five finishers at Arsenal. One, um, Lacazette, two, uh, Pepe, three, Abameyang, four, Smith Wall, and five, Martinelli. At the moment, those are the players that really finish well. So if you ask me, what is Pepe good at? If you, I feel like if you give him the service, if you, you know, if, if he goes to a club where uh, he's the center of attention and he's getting that service. Uh, he can absolutely be a beast. He can actually, uh, he, he can actually work out for you know for for for, for such a club. Uh, okay. Uh, right, right, right. Uh, Kata says, Ricky, I don't agree with you. I think he's just struggling on the pitch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I feel like he's uh, you know only struggling on the pitch, but uh, the rest is uh, you know is actually okay. Max says, Kosi hasn't uh, hasn't Lily. Uh, Cause he hasn't really showed interest in resigning Pepe yet. Uh, uh, resigning Pepe yet? Uh, Lilo? Oh, you're saying uh, Lil has it? Yeah, yeah. No, at the moment, Lil, I've, no, I, I've not seen any links uh, that uh, Lil want him back. I've not seen any links like that. Um, and then Anu says, uh, seriously, I watch Pepe during uh, his stay at Lil. Very, very fast dribbling. Look, uh, but, but, but it's also the nature of. Uh, uh, it's also the the nature of. Um, the nature of uh, the French League One, right? It's also the nature of the French League One. Uh, uh, Noah says Alba are uh, in it, all right? Alba, uh, uh, you know, uh, last minute chance, you give it to Abameyang, all right? Um, and then Henry says last minute chance, Lacazette. Noah says last minute chance, Nicola Pepe. Um, uh, and then Noah says last minute chance. Uh, um, uh, Noah said Pepe, right? And then he says, uh, Noah says also Abba has been missing silly chances. Yeah, I, I feel like the level at which he's been missing chances is higher than the levels at which he's been finishing them off. You're right. Uh, and then Anu says, Laka first, Smithworth next, Abameyang, 
Saka and Pepe. Saka is really not finishing chances, really. I uh, know. Saka is not finishing ch uh, ch no chances. Um, Mohamed says Arsenal must make swap deal uh, with um, with House uh, that That's the best solution. That's according to Mohamed. Uh, look, if Lil could could be willing to take Nicola Pepe, uh, which I think the uh, which I think is a little bit of a doubt. But if they are willing, uh, I think we would be willing to do the same as well. Yeah, I, I think it would be you know it would be very very good. I go for Pepe. That's according to Stephen Keita. Um, and then uh, says, I would go for, uh, you know, uh, Pepe. You know, uh, I would go for Pepe big time. L literally, Pepe, guys, truth is Pepe is one of our best finishers at the club. Believe, you, believe me, you, he's one of our best finishers. We are two more likes away from 40. Thanks, everybody. Uh, if, you, if you're generous to do that, two more likes. Like, one, two, we have 40 people watching. Uh, if you've not smashed the like button, if, like, if you've not clicked that like button on your, on your phone, um, or on your, on, on your computer, do that. Thanks everybody for doing that. I'm I'm absolutely you know grateful. So uh, as we close the show, guys, as we close the show, um, I'm gonna ask you one question. Among these two players, who should uh, who do you think Arsenal should go for if party in, you know if party injuries or, or if party injury concerns uh, do not uh, get a solution? Zakaria and uh, Dijan Kulisevsky. Now. Kulisevsky, uh, uh, look, his name is, uh, you know, like Kuliseski, right? If, 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 you're, uh, um, if you want to be really, really, uh, you know, uh, good at pronounce, you know, pronouncing the name, it's like he's Kuliseski. Kuliseski is uh, like more of um, a forward player, right? Very, very forward, actually. Uh, but he's more like a Donny van der Beek. You could play him, you know, again, uh, he's been looked at um, as, um, you know, as a possible replacement uh, of Nicola Pepe, but... The more I watch him, the more I look at him, is he can be one of those players that can be used in a 4-3-3, right? It can, be, it can be one of those players that can be used in a 4-3-3 and it can be a very, very good player uh, because he has a very, very soft, interesting left foot to watch. Very, very soft, interesting. But the two players, let me try to compare the two players, not really in, uh, in how good they are and everything, but in, in their style of play. Kulisewski is forward thinking and is very, very progressive. Right, go watch his highlights at Juve. Uh, uh, the few times he's played, he's very, very uh, progressive. He loves to pick up the ball and run with it forward. Zakaria is a very, very um, conventional DM. Actually, I was watching Zakaria uh, 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 against Italy. He's what you know. You know those players that get the ball, pass it on, and rest. Yes, he can come into advanced areas, but he really adds literally nothing uh, in the final third, right? But again, what Zakaria would do is he would make Pate, um, you know, a more attacking midfielder. He would make Pate a more attacking central midfielder, right? Uh, what, uh, that is what Zakaria. What Dijan Kulisevsky does or Kulisevsky does is uh, he makes Pate or he, he would make Pate a more defensive midfielder so among those two just um you know four people just give me your opinions because uh, i love to engage with you among those two who do you prefer kuleseski that you know uh, really loves going forward uh and, and and pumping uh you know the team up uh you know it, you know it's you know it, it, the, the team's heartbeat uh going forward which we are lacking at the moment i think we need uh more players that help us go forward or then it's a career who helps Pate, uh, you know, uh, pick up more responsibility going forward, which I think would also work for us because we've seen Pate is actually good with, when he plays with Lokonga because Lokonga is that kind of defensive shield uh, that protects uh, you know, the back line. Which player do you go for? As we look for our last two likes um, and we've got them. Thanks, everybody. We've got them. So, if you, I mean, I'll be grateful if you give me three likes to end it at 45. Three more likes to end it at 45. I'll be very, very grateful. Um, so, uh, Noah says Pepe never gets game time from Pepe never gets game time from Ateta, and he needs to play over Saka, to play over Saka, and Ateta over uh, overplays him, and and uh, and it's hindering his rhythm. That's according to Noah. Let, let me get let me get back to that. Uh, and then Regan says Pepe needs a free row. Uh, and then Hillary says let's make use of the opportunity. Uh, please, Gunners, uh, he's a good footballer. And one thing I've seen with you all is you agree with me. There is a good player there in Nicola Pepe. We've just you know, we've just failed to unlock 
his greatness. We've just failed to unlock, uh, you know, the good thing in Nicola Pepe. But there is a good player in Pepe. Yeah. There is a good player in Pepe. Hillary says we need a pro and we need progressive players. I prefer, uh, you know, uh, Kliseski, please. And then and, uh, Anu says we need to know uh, what party wants us uh, so as to know his uh, suitable partner. I said that in summer, by the way. Yeah, I said that in summer. Uh, but um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because um, look, I, I think the best part of party is the best part of party is when uh, you play him in that role where uh, you know he links. Of you know uh, defensive and offensive, but he's not as sharp uh, uh, in the final third like you have a Santi Cazola or a Sami Nagri, right? That's my problem with him. And uh, I would I, I would say why not get a player like uh, 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 maybe uh, uh, Kuliseski who would share responsibility with Pate going forward. Um, and also maybe share responsibility with them uh, defensive-wise. Maybe, right? Uh, how do you see? Uh, Anu says both uh, Zakaria uh, and Kulisewski, um, you know, are absolutely okay. Uh, you know, uh, absolutely. So let me get to this. Uh, let me get back to uh, Noah's uh, uh, argument that Pepe never gets game time uh, uh, from Mateta and he needs to play over Saka. I don't agree with that. Actually, I think Pepe is better off on the left-hand side of the pitch, and Saka is better off on the uh, on, on the right. Because Saka uh, literally becomes inverted, uh, you know, gets more time to uh, cut inside and get uh, get those uh, shooting opportunities when he's playing uh, on the right. And Pepe as well, when he's playing, uh, you know, when he's playing on the left, uh, we saw him last season. He was actually getting in the box more uh, and, and and trying to score uh, more goals. Right? I feel like. The, he's not misplaced on the pitch. Game time, I don't feel again. That's a that's that's an accusation, uh, 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 an accusation that uh, Mikel shouldn't be taking. Look, Mikel can be blamed for many things, but um, the lack of game time uh, from for Pepe, no, no. And he says let's go for Zakaria, and then says uh, 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 he says let's go for Zakaria. Uh, then so guys, it's been a very very interesting stream. Uh, I thank everybody who has taken the initiative to smash a like on the video, um, and, and 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 everyone who has taken the initiative to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you if, guys, I'm gonna say this: if you're not receiving notifications, turn off the notification bell and then turn it back on. Right. Turn off the notification bell and then turn it back on. Uh, also, make sure that you've select all notification. It will help you to all notifications. It will help you to receive every up, you know, every update. And then, why not say Kwaheri for now? I love you so much. Enjoy your Sunday. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.